What is going on, Denelon High School? This is Unit 1 Kinematics. This is the last podcast of Kinematics, and then we're on to a new topic. And this is projectile motion, not half, but full. And guys, if you were the Mac Daddy at doing half projectile motions, then then you're going to be awesome at full projectile motions because it's it's really it's no harder. And l- l- let me show you a problem with this, okay? This is like we're kicking something or throwing something in the air at 10 meters per second. And we know what well, what kind of happens when you throw something is it, it it ends up being kind of like a big projectile motion, doesn't it? Okay? It starts going up and then it comes back down, okay? And that's kind of what happens. Now, I know this arrow isn't going with this uh this projectile but we have a parabola going on okay and so what do we have any time we see this at all 10 meters per second at 30 degrees what do we want to split it up into is x and y and how do we do that if you remember back from the old podcast we t- we took the r cosine of theta how do we find the y we do r sine of theta and when i do this 10 cosine of 30 it's 8.66 meters per second in my x so that's called my velocity, my x. My velocity, my y, is 5 meters per second. And those are the components of this arrow. Now, guys, it, we want to split this problem up into an x and to a y. And you can see that's so similar to what we just did in our half projectile motion. And what's the only equ- equation we can use in the x is vx equals dx over time because it's moving at a constant velocity. And I know my velocity of my x is 8.66 meters per second. I don't know anything else. I don't know that displacement in the x, which is we call the range. I don't know the time. Okay? The y, man, there's tons of stuff we know. And this is my big, that is an awful looking line, but that's okay. I'll live with it. Um, in the y, there's tons of stuff we know. And I suggest splitting this up in two types of problems. And if you look at the second half of the problem, it looks like a cliff problem, doesn't it? Which means, what's my initial velocity up here? It's zero meters per second in the y. What's my final velocity in my y? Well, I know it's five meters per second. Why? Because my initial velocity all the way over here was five meters per second. So when it goes up with five meters per second, guess what it's going to come down with? five meters per second, and, but that's only in the y. We also have this distance in the y, which we call the height, and we also have something that's making it change its velocity. We call that gravity. And gravity is an acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the other reason I like using the second half is I can use positive 9.8 because it's going down. I can make everything going down positive. It's accelerating as it's coming down. Okay. If I had to use the beginning part, I would have to use negative 9.8. Now, what's the thing that Mr. Aiden loves to find? I love to find time. I'm just a time, I'm just time crazy, aren't I? So I want to find time. So I'm going to use this nice, easy formula right here. Okay? But that's not what I'm going to use to find time. That's not the formula. I'm going to use the VF equals VI plus AT. I tricked it there, didn't I? Okay? My final velocity is 5. My initial velocity is 0. My acceleration is 9.8 or 10. And that's my time. So my time ends up being 0.51 seconds. Now that's my time right here. My time is 0.51 seconds. Okay. Now remember, what what were we able to do in the last in the cliff problem was we were able to take this time and just mosey on it over to the x. I told you that time is a great equalizer, but we got to remember we're only looking at the second half of this problem. What's what's the time at the beginning half of the problem? It's 0.51 seconds. Why? It's a mirrored image. So what time do I have to use over here in the x? I got to use the entire time, the total time, 1.02 seconds, and that's going to be total time because I want to find not half the dx, I want to find the total distance in the x or displacement in the x, which is called the range. How do I find this? I do v, that velocity, times time, and that gives me the displacement in the x, and my displacement in the x is 8.84 meters. Okay? That was the displacement in the x, 8.84 meters. And you can take a look. That's going from here to here, 8.84 meters. And that's why I used the full time. Now, I do also want to find the height, which is the displacement in the y. And that's I'm going to come to this equation that I already wrote down. Now, 
what's nice about this equation is that's zero, isn't it? And I have one half. We have gravity, 9.8, times my time. Now, what time am I going to use right here? I'm going to use the 0.51, okay? I'm going to square that bad boy. Now, why am I going to use the 0.51? Because this height is like that cliff problem. It only depends on the uh, half the time, okay? And when I end up doing that, I end up getting a displacement in the x, or a height of 1.27 meters. So that's how high it went, 1.27 meters. Guys, that is a full projectile motion problem. Pretty easy, right? If, if you know how to do the second half, it's just a mirrored image is all it is. And so split things up into x and y, make sure you get your components, and you just plug stuff into your equations. Hope that was helpful, guys. Uh, remember, go to AP Physics at MrRayden.com and do the Google Docs on 1.5, projectile motion full. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you in class. Bye.